Hey Stampers, Kim from StampingAndPerfection.com. Thanks for joining me today. I want to share a card I'm going to make with the all to new Hello Gorgeous stamp set. It comes with a coordinating die set and the new thing that's, that that new has been doing lately, they include this pamphlet inside the stamp set. And this is kind of cool because they show you lots of layouts. They show you other stamp sets that they have that would pair perfectly with the stamp set. They give you some color suggestions, layout suggestions. This is a handy little thing to have. And um, the a, some, a lot of their stamp sets will actually have uh, layering guides also. So I'm going to pull out the large um, floral image, and I believe these are lilies. I'm going to color them like, like they're lilies, so I'm going to pull that out. And I'm going to use my Mini Misty. I've got a piece of watercolor paper. This is Canson XL watercolor paper, 140 pounds, cut at four and a quarter by five and a half, and I'm going to tilt that at a jaunty little angle. And um, I'm going to pull out my favorite black ink. This is Altenew's permanent black ink. I love this ink. I use it for everything. I actually purchased it when Altenew came out with their Altenew artist markers, their alcohol marker set. And um, this works perfectly with the alcohol markers. It's a permanent pigment black ink. But this is my go-to black ink. I use this for everything. Even watercoloring techniques, believe it or not, I love this ink. And um, only once or twice has it ever, have I ever had any bleeding issues when I'm doing watercoloring. So I just, I don't know, this is the one I reach for. I just really like it. Um, so I'm gonna make actually a bunch of the background images on the watercolor. I'm gonna heat set some, um, or, or heat emboss, I mean, uh, in black. And I, I just wanna point out that the ink pads actually have nice little grips on the back of them, so they're very comfortable to hold while you're inking up a stamp. Um, but I'm gonna heat emboss some backgrounds in black. I'm gonna heat emboss some in white. I'm going to stamp some on Bristol cardstock, also cut at four and a quarter by five and a half. I just want to make a bunch of backgrounds because I'm going to do some experimenting today. Altenew just came out with um, watercolor brush markers. It's a set of 10 watercolor brush markers in quite a nice rainbow of colors, and I just can't wait to try them. So I'm just going to stamp a whole bunch of these backgrounds or these um, images so that I can actually play with those. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to introduce you to these watercolor brush markers. So I have the um, swatch page that I created in my swatch notebook and um, this is a set of 10 of these watercolor brush markers and I don't know if I would call them water brush um, markers so much as they're very much like aqua painters or the water brushes, only these are filled with paint. And just like the like Wink of Stella brushes, um, you have a little, they come with a little midsection that you actually have to remove and then you have to squeeze them to sort of activate them or prime them. And um, just to get it flowing. And I have noticed that you can squeeze too much and you'll get a big drop of the watercolor. So you want to be of the watercolor paint. So you want to be careful with that. So I'm, I'm just experimenting. So I'm actually putting this on dry and you can see I just squeeze that a little bit. I started with just dusk around the edge. And then um, this is sea breeze. I'm going around there. I really like to have a, a little background color around my images. So I thought I would start there to see how it mixed and stuff like that. And I started out with a number six brush and um, I kind of at this point was wishing I had not put so much of that color down first. And I also think that I might have found this easier to blend if I'd actually 
wet around the edge, then put the color down, and done a wet on wet technique. That might have been better. So I ended up switching to a number four brush, and I I didn't find that any easier. They were, I felt like I needed something stiffer. So I tried an aqua brush or a water brush with water in it to see if that would work better. Um, but I didn't like that at all. I really like using the real a real paintbrush. And um, so I ended up pulling out one of my angled flat brushes just to um, add enough water and a little bit more pressure to blend the line that I had now created. These are watercolors, so you can like even if they dry, you, you can reactivate them by adding water to them. But I wasn't really getting enough water on there. I really needed to add more water and I felt like I needed to um, push a little harder. So I decided, you know, I used to do a lot of oil painting. I decided I would pull out my favorite shape of oil painting brush, which is this angled flat brush. And I had a much easier time when I did that of um, like really getting enough water along the lines to reactivate that color and um, get it to blend. So that was what I was trying to do. And when I do the backgrounds like this, I really like when you get a variation in the color. Like I'm not even trying for an ombre effect. I want it to look watercolored and I love that look where you have some like dried water lines in it. I really like the way that looks. I, I know everybody doesn't like that. I know my sister doesn't like it. So when she sees the final card, she's probably going to say it looks too messy. But that's okay because I really like the messy. I try to embrace the imperfection. So I am going to go around this whole card and the dusk really didn't do very much. I didn't put a very thick line of dusk and that sea breeze was much darker than I expected. I usually try to do a very subtle color background and this was not subtle. This was pretty colorful for me for a background but it's so pretty and um, so this is my first attempt at using them and I will switch back to a round brush after I put these down. And I have to be honest, I haven't really watched like videos or anything about how to use these. So I'm sort of experimenting on my own with these water brushes. And I, I'm sure that you can actually do this without using a, a paintbrush at all or a, a, an aqua painter or a water brush with water in it. But um, I really love using paint brushes when I watercolor. I don't know why. It makes me feel like a real artist, I guess. But um, I'm just going to continue to go around this whole thing till I have all of the color down. So I'm going to speed that. So I'm just continuing to get rid of those lines, just add more water. I actually have quite a bit of paint on my brush. So I'm just going to continue going around the other edge and um, it, you can see it's getting lighter and lighter as I play with it. And I, I'm kind of liking the way it looks. I do have one big dark spot there, but I'm grabbing that. This is again the sea breeze color and I'm just putting it down in a few spots and you can see that quite a bit of paint actually comes out of there all at once. Like I was surprised by how much came out at once. Um, but I'm just adding a bunch of water and surprisingly it really can take a lot of water this paper and uh, I'm going to continue just to add water smooth out that line and just get it lighten it up a little bit it's actually a lot darker than I expected and it's a lot darker than I wanted it to be I usually have light subtle backgrounds but I'm just going to add water and fuss with it a little bit till I get it the way that I want it. And I'm pulling that big angled flat brush out again just to s smooth it and add like a lot of water. So just kind of 
fussing with the edges, moving that color around to the other side, trying to get rid of that big blob a little bit. But all in all, I'm not unhappy. I'm just going to hit it with a heat gun. I want to dry this layer before I start doing the inside of that card. I usually heat up the back a little bit, then I'm going to heat up the front again. That helps keep it from warping too much because I did put quite a bit of water to get rid of the lines that I had. And I'll just continue this. And now I'm going to add some color to those flowers. And it's a little hard to tell where the flowers are and where the leaves are in this image. Like it helps if you have the um, that pamphlet in front of you so you can kind of see uh, the die cut one especially because they should kind of show you what the artist's rendering was like. So I'm pulling out my favorite color. This is warm sunshine. I absolutely love this yellow. I think it's perfect. And I actually added some water first this time and then put that warm sunshine in. And now this is the autumn blaze. And I'm, I'm really not like I did not cover that whole flower with the warm sunshine. It just kind of scribbled it in. And I went to drop in that autumn blaze and I got a lot like a big blob came out. So I'm thinking that I when I open these, I should probably just dab them on a paper towel or uh, later you'll see me pull out a clear block if I just open them and dab them onto the clear block if there's a big drop then it'll go onto the clear block and I can actually use that so I'm just adding more warm sunshine I, I use some of the I use actually use that warm sunshine to spread that autumn blaze around and it doesn't really it temporarily transfer some color to the brush tip of that um, warm sunshine color but as you use it, the orange comes off and it just goes back to pure yellow again. So now I, I, these on these two blooms, I just put the warm sunshine on and I didn't put water on first because I wanted to experiment. I wanted to see what happened. And I actually liked it better when I added the water first. Um, so, cause I could get more shading. Like I, I found it easier to shade and I, I'm actually adding that autumn blaze and you can see a lot of that came out again and I, I'm not squeezing it at all. The only time I squeezed it really was the first time I used it. So now I'm just trying to spread some of that orange around and actually remove a little bit. So I dry off my brush a little bit on, I dry off my brush a little bit, sorry about that, on the paper towel and then um, pull off some of that orange color. Now I'm adding some more yellow back in and trying to like brush that orange back because I really like this yellow and I want them to be lighter. I'd like the orange to be in the areas where I think it should be darker. So I'm just going to hit this with the heat gun again. And then I want to play around with the leaves. So I'm pulling out the moss color. And since I liked the the flower where I did the wet on wet, I'm adding some water. So I'm going to do the wet on wet technique with the leaves. And I'm going to add that darker color all along the edges where I expect that it would have like a little shadow or to, it would actually be darker. And um, then I'm going to add some of that limey, that, that yellowy green color. And I'm sort of adding that toward the top and then going down toward the darker color and then pulling some of the darker color into it. Um, because I, again, I got quite a bit of that moss on, moss color on in, in and like big blobs. So I don't want my whole leaf, like all of my leaves to be completely moss. I want some of that yellowy green in there. That's pretty fabulous, that color. And you know, there's not a lot of rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I'm just really kind of playing with it to see how these behave. And um, now I'm pulling out, um, this is supposed to be evening gray and it looks pretty brown to me, but I kind of want to create a shadow. I'm, I'm really not uh, an expert on where the light is coming from. So I try to keep it to the left and along the bottom, but it's really like 
anybody who knows anything about where the light source is coming from will look at this and say, well, that's not quite right, but it's okay. I just, I just want to create some darker spots where it appears to be a shadow because it actually gives the image some dimension and I actually like that. So I'm just kind of going around like the edges of petals and the left edge of the whole image and um, you know where one petal meets another petal just to make it a little bit darker in those spots just so it looks like it pops off the page a little bit. So not being an expert, I, nobody is really, unless I ask them, nobody is really going to be analyzing this. Like I asked my son, he took art classes in college. I asked him, he analyzed it and made some suggestions for future cards, which I will take into consideration. And they were good suggestions and they were very constructive. So most people are gonna just look at the overall effect though. So I, I think that we shouldn't ever worry too much about it. And so this is actually the point where um, he had given me some suggestions and I thought I would try to fix it a little bit. And notice that I pulled out that clear block and I actually put the blue on that clear block and added some water to it and it pulled in one of my round paint brushes and I'm seeing if I can fix some of the spots he was talking about and now I want to add like I really want more yellow on these leaves and I want to put it at like the base where I I think the shadows would be so I'm adding it to where the petals meet petals and underneath petals and also to the lines that the artist put in because the artist put those in so or the stamp illustrator put those in so I'm assuming that they mean for it to be a little darker on those spots and um, I'm just like blending that a little bit and I think the whole point of this is to have fun with it and to um, hopefully it's relaxing and I, I, you can see I'm just darkening up the yellow in a couple spots and I'm liking it better as I do this it's I feel better about it and um, this is actually a really fun product to use one more kind of watercolor I'm gonna want to paint with all the time so I have one final thing I want to do, and that is I want to make those um, pistols and stamens in the center of the flower red. And I pulled out that rubellite color. It's super pretty, like purpley red, like pinky purpley red color. And I actually put that on the clear block and added water so I could just fill in those spots. The the card that I'm using, the card base that I'm using actually is the black heat embossed. I like to watercolor on embossed images because it resists the watercolor. For the final touches on this card, I pulled out my white gel pen and I'm just putting some white dots around. I, I really like the way that looks. I, I don't know, it's just a nice little touch. It kind of brightens it up a little bit and I think I like that. And I also love my black splashes. so. I'm also going to do that. I'm going to pull out my Altenew um, permanent black pad. And I know this is not a water-based pad, but I just put a little bit down, spritz it with my Distress Sprayer, pull out a big brush, big round brush, you know, just fill it with water. And then I'm going to put some black splatters on that. And I notice again, I sort of do it diagonally across the card. I don't like the whole card front covered, but I like a few of those splashes. I don't know why. I think it just really finishes off a card nicely. So I, to finish this, I, I'm going to let this dry. To finish this off, I'm going to add a sentiment and I really, really love that big hello. I just think it's really pretty. And without even realizing it, I laid this out exactly like one of the suggested layouts in that pamphlet. Um, I didn't intend to do that, but it turned out that way and I really like it.
it's pretty. So I'm putting the hello down. I used my embossing buddy. I've got my all to new embossing ink and you can see I've already loved it a lot because it's got, it's not that nice white color anymore. I inked, inked it with the embossing ink from all to new. I, I'm using black embossing powder and then I'm just gonna heat set this and add some embellishments because I do love my embellishments. So I've got a card base that I cut at four and a quarter by 11. I scored it at five and a half. I'm going to use my 3M foam tape. I really like this tape. I say this every time. Um, another, I actually considered also using some of my white craft foam because this did warp a little bit. Uh, I added quite a bit of water when I was doing that blue background, but I'm going to go with the the, um, the foam tape and I'm going to carefully lay it down here. I try to line it up with a crease in one edge and as long as you don't push on that foam tape, you can fuss with it a little bit. The moment you push down, it's permanent. You're not getting that off. So my card is a little bit, my card base is a little bit long. I'm just trimming that off by running my scissors along the edge of that watercolor paper. And for one final touch, of course I need to have some sequins or, or embellishments on the card. And I'm pulling out one of my favorite embellishments. This is the Like Magic Mix from Neat and Tangled. I really love this set, it's so pretty. It's an iridescent set of a variety of sizes. I'm laying them down in the triangular pattern with an odd number across the image. I really like that. And I'm using my quick stick and my multimedia mat and that's going to complete my card. So thank you so much for watching. Stop by my blog at stampingimperfection.com. Give this video a like, share with your friends, and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll include some links to the ultra new products that I've used here today below the video and on my blog at stampingimperfection.com.